What is up guys? Welcome back to a new video. Today we're taking an in-depth look at the DJI Osmo Mobile. So let me show you the packaging first. DJI Osmo Mobile and shows a photo and then DJI logo here Osmo Mobile DJI and there I don't know if you can see it but if you get the right angle you can see Osmo on it right there Osmo Mobile and then here hmm okay the gimbals Zenmuse Zen M1 nice so the packaging I'd say is very high quality feels like you're unboxing an Apple product like an iPhone or iPad so let's get into the package you can open it here and then just slide the box looks like it slides out I hope hmm there it comes perfect wow very high quality let's put this to the side so now very nice thick black box let's open it up we have a lot of paperwork this is Osmo Shield so it tells you um, the uh, warranty things and everything warranty service Instructions again. Instructions. Uh, quick start guide. Um, Osmo Shield in Chinese, I guess. Osmo Mobile disclaimer and safety guide. Intelligent battery um, guide. Instruction manual. And then the main event, the gimbal itself. Let's take out the battery here. Very nice battery, very lightweight. I believe it is 850 or 900 milliamps. 980 milliamps. Probably can't see it right there. 980 milliamps. It's a self balancing um, intelligent battery. The charging cable. And the funny thing about the charging cable is that it's a, it's a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, you would say. So on the regular DJI Osmo, you can um, um, use a uh, external microphone that plugs into the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. But with this one, you can only put the charging uh, head, uh, jack into the 3.5 millimeter hole. Otherwise, uh, the microphone will not work if you have an external microphone. It doesn't work with the mobile version. And we also have a compartment right here. As you can see, let's open it up. It's a carrying case for the gimbal. Very nice. It says DJI, of course. Nothing special. Has like a handle on it. DJI as well. Shiny. Let's open it up. Looks like a decent amount of space in there very high quality as well and then there's this side pocket and there we have a band that you can put onto the gimbal so you won't drop it so I mean if you drop it it won't like fall out of your hands completely so uh, for safety of course very nice so let's put this to the side um, let's put this back in here close it very nice put it to the side and then the gimbal itself Let's take it out. Ooh, it's tight. Wow, and there it is. Now let's put the box to the side. Perfect. And there you have the gimbal itself. Very nice three axis brushless gimbal. I must say it's quite heavy and I think that is because of the uh, I think it's a uh, steel frame in the uh, there's a, like a, a tiny a very uh, thin plastic layer on here but uh, underneath it's all steel frame I believe 
or even uh, or maybe aluminum but something that's uh, extra heavy duty and very strong so the here you put your phone and this is rubberized so your phone will grip easily and it won't fall out and of course your phone won't scratch in here um, now you can there's a knob on the back that says lock and unlock and you can just twist it and it opens just like that and I'm gonna get my Stone Age iPhone 5 and just put it in like that perfect fits perfectly close it back up perfect oh it needs to be cleaned man okay just like that and then you gotta make sure if it's balanced or not that is perfectly balanced now let's go ahead and install the battery download the DJI GO app and let's take a look so the battery goes in here in the handle itself so what you do is just slide and open then the battery has to go in with the uh, metal ridges first like like so it slides right in perfectly until it clicks click perfect close slide just like that now the gimbal has a few buttons and switches and things and a few lights LED lights this green light right here means that the gimbal is on and is working successfully now you have all kinds of cool features with the DJI GO app for example you can of course make video or photo by sliding this button up and down if you press here where it says normal right there you can select standard which is a normal photo slow motion time lapse or M time lapse that's in video mode if you go to photo mode and you press there again you can select single panorama or long exposure let's do a panorama real quick you can choose a 180 330 or a wide view this is the kinda the GoPro view that's what I call it if you press it it's a 3x3 three three, so it makes nine photos in total let's do it just press the button right here to make the photo one two three four five six seven eight nine and back to the center it needs to process the photo and this is what it looks like cool huh just be if you for example if you um, are with a lot of family and friends and you cannot get them in the shot all at, at once just do the 3x3 three three and it will be no problem go back to single for a regular photo just like that then if we press here which is the gimbal logo you can also do a pitch lock and what that means is if I do this if I go down and up the gimbal will follow slowly but if I lock pitch just like that pitch is locked as you can see it will constantly point in the same direction you see very cool I'm gonna go back to the normal mode again by pressing it one more time if you press the scene mode button you can put it on walk or sport mode if you have it on walk it will be very smooth and slow if you put it on sport like in a supercar sport means fast and now it will respond very fast but the video won't be as smooth as in walk mode so I'm gonna go back to walk mode just like that then we have a settings right in the corner we can select camera gimbal general and live let's go to camera video resolution panorama quality and reset camera if you press the video resolution you can choose your video resolution I can choose 730p at 30 frames 
1080 at 60 or 1080 at 30. I'm going to go for 1080 at 60 frames, of course. Perfect. Panorama quality. It is on low right now. You can go over middle or high. Let's go over high. Then, reset camera. If you press the reset camera, all it does is just reset the camera and go back to where you started off. Press done to exit. Just like that. Then, we can also choose gimbal in the, in, in the settings. If we press gimbal, we can choose calibrate horizon, auto calibration, fast configure, stick control direction, invert pan stick, and invert tilt stick, and the mobile device check. Calibrate horizon, the, real, the only thing you have to um, calibrate the horizon yourself. So it tells you exactly, um, you know, one degree down, one degree up. It just tells you how to put it and, and how to set it. Auto calibration is the one that I use most of the time. Um, that is the one you, you need to do that when, when you first get it as well. Just make sure it's calibrated properly. And it does everything itself. It goes up and down and twists and just make sure it's completely straight and calibrated. Then we can go to joystick, joystick settings. We have the fast configure, stick, di stick control direction, invert pan stick, and invert tilt stick. If you go to fast configure, you can move the gimbal with the joystick up and down, down and up, of course. But if you want it to move slow, the gimbal now moves very slow and the response is not very quick. The response is very slow to be exact. Now, if you set the response, the fast configure to middle, it already moves a lot faster, but still not very fast. This is the standard setting, by the way. I like to have it on fast, so I can move it as fast as possible. You see? A lot faster. Sick control direction. What they mean by that, if you have it on horizontal and vertical, which is that, you can only do one thing at a time, up and down or right and left. You cannot go to the right and then go up at the same time. You only can do that if you put it on free. Just like, yeah, now you can go up and to the right at the same time. Just like that. And you can also invert the pan and tilt stick. Press done if you want to exit. Just like that. Now, usually with if you have a new iPhone like a 6S, you can follow objects. objects. But since I have an iPhone 5C, it's not going to work. So you need an iPhone 6 or newer for it to work. So usually you just press this button right there and then you can select the object but it's not working with mine, sadly. Now what you, know, what you can also do is, for example, if you can move it by, with your hand as well, if you put the gimbal like this, like it's, it's probably a total, totally useless position. If you press if you click the joystick on the back twice see what happens when I do that it goes back to its original calibrated position that is very neat so it doesn't matter in which posi position everything is set doesn't matter just tap it twice and boom it goes back now that is pretty cool I think
Now I'm going to show you some footage with and without the gimbal. Let's go. Also, a really cool feature on the DJI Osmo Mobile is that if you hold the trigger button, just hold it, then this happens. Everything, every angle is locked. You can twist it like that, you can just go around, throw it, and just wobble it and do everything. And if you let go, it's back to normal again. Now, that's real cool, right? So yeah, guys, that was it for today's video. Hope you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. And we're going to make lots of future videos with the DJI Osmo because I think it looks a lot better. And I hope you do too. So as always, I'll see you in the next one.